everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome to another video. If you are a software engineer or a software developer watching this video, there is a good chance that you feel anxious every time there is an AI breakthrough. By now we have seen GPT-4 debug code faster than we can read it. We've seen Claude being named the best coding model on the planet. A part of me is anxious too because seeing these AI tools pump out code at this pace is low-key insane and also it makes me wonder how much value can I add to the industry as someone who writes code for a living. It is a valid fear, but that's exactly what it is, a fear. And we've known for over 2000 years that we shouldn't be making decisions based on fear. Marcus Aurelius wrote about not letting anxiety of the future rob us of the present. And Seneca said that we suffer way more imagination than we ever do in reality. I want to approach AI with a growth and a learning mindset rather than with fear. I think that AI will not be the end of the software engineering career. However, it is a fundamental change and a turning point, And it is also an opportunity to do way more with less. So the best thing to do is to learn more about it. When we understand the tools that we work with, that is how we can best apply them and leverage them ourselves. So I came up with a learning strategy. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what that strategy is. After extensive research, I picked three books, which I believe have the knowledge that I'm looking for. These are technical books. They are not like prompt engineering for beginners types of books. You do need to have some knowledge of computer science, uh, machine learning and statistics. But if you do have that and you want to really learn how LLMs work under the hood, I think that these three books are exactly what we need. This is a curated three-step process. The first book will teach us all about LLMs, how LLMs are set up and how they work. The second book will teach us, it's not this one, it's actually this one. The second book will teach us how to build our own LLM from scratch. And the last book is all about AI architectures and how to deploy them in production. So go ahead and grab a copy and let's discuss them in more detail. So the first book we're talking about is Hands-On Large Language Models by Jay Alomar and Martin Grutendwurst. Jay Alomar is a director and an engineering fellow at Cohere, an AI company. If you ever looked up anything related to the Transformers architecture, you've probably come across stuff that he has written. And Martin is a psychologist turned AI engineer who works at a cancer research institution in the Netherlands. Martin built Bird Topic and Keybird, which are two widely used AI packages. All of this to say that these two authors are very hands-on and they have a lot of experience building AI systems. And they wrote this book together and it is full of really good content, really good diagrams, which make us understand LLMs and the architecture of the different components of an LLM. It is all about large language models and how they work under the hood. However, their definition of a large language model is not just like GPT-4 and these massive models that we see nowadays. The book starts by giving us an overview of the history of AI and how everything kind of like played out and what were the major breakthroughs which led to us here in the present moment. It also explains attention and the transformer architecture. It explains embeddings and tokens and tokenization. Um, it dives into the different types of AI models that we have, such as representation models, uh, generative models, uh, pre-trained models, fine-tuned models, all of that. Okay, this is actually my marker. It's just some, some napkins. Um, this is where I'm at currently. I'm reading about tokens. But what I wanted to say is that this book is not just conceptual. It does have a lot of code examples that we can follow to actually implement some of the things they talk about. This is a chapter about text classification and it gives us an example on how we can run some of the models that are available on Hugging Face. I have myself also done one of the examples so far in the first chapter and it was really easy to follow and to implement. I guess the risk with books is that sometimes they give you an implementation which might be outdated as time goes on because the libraries and the APIs could change. You need to account for that. In fact, I've already noticed something that changed since this book was released. But honestly, I think that's a very minor thing and you can usually easily figure out the new way to implement the API by yourself. The second book in my learning plan might seem a bit counterintuitive. It is Build a Large Language Model from Scratch by Sebastian Raschka. I noticed that Sebastian Raschka actually studied at a uni very close to where I was born in Germany, which was a funny coincidence. 
Sebastian is an LLM research engineer and he has over 10,000 Google Scholar citations, which is actually quite a lot. This book is about how to build your own LLM and how to build large language models in general. It might seem counterintuitive because who would build their own LLM when ChatGPT exists, right? The thing is that this is not about competing with Claude or ChatGPT. It is about learning the fundamentals and getting your hands dirty. I think we can all relate to that feeling in school and at university where we were forced to implement something which, you know, anyone can get open source, but it is usually by building those projects that you learn the most. So I wanted to include one of these books in my learning path where I can have the opportunity to build something like that myself. So I really want to give this a try. I'm sure it won't be easy, <laughs> but yeah, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. I think what Sebastian Rashka is really good at is at explaining very complicated topics in easy ways. The book teaches us how to implement transformers from scratch using PyTorch, how to build training loops, and also how to write attention mechanisms ourselves. And don't worry about the terms, because if you read the previous book, then you will know what all of those things mean, and you will have a very good understanding of them. I've been using the Plot Note Pin, which is the small, sleek note-taking device to take note of my ideas, and it has been a game changer. So I got this device a week ago, and yesterday I was in Greenwich about to get a coffee, and I had this idea for a YouTube video. Usually I would have been fumbling to get my phone out of my bag to write it down. Probably I would have dropped something while doing it, or I would have taken note of it in my head and then I would have most certainly forgotten it because that happens to me all the time as well. But now I just grab this little note taker and I start talking. All I have to do is press on it and it will record and process everything that I say and I can then revisit it later. This is also ideal for brainstorming sessions with work colleagues. As software engineers, for example, we often have spontaneous design discussions or implementation trade-off discussions. They don't happen in a formal meeting, but rather they happen in the office organically. We never end up having documentation on this or having a recording of what was said. This is really perfect for that because I just have to press on the button and it will record everything that's being said. However, the real magic happens in the app. It doesn't just transcribe what was said, it actually creates mind maps tailored for different needs. For content creation, for example, it pulls key insights from my thoughts and generates actionable to-do lists. You can also use it at work, as I already mentioned, for brainstorming sessions and meetings. It's very useful also for students. You can record classes if you're allowed to and revisit the content. The note pin captures everything and then the AI turns explanations into organized study material. Plot is developed on ChatGPT and the AI summaries are very helpful for kind of organizing creative chaos. We are obviously living in the age of AI and now AI hardware as well, and I would be very curious to hear what your thoughts are on it. And whether there's any application that you can see in your day-to-day -day life where you can use AI hardware. Let me know in the comments. Now, the last book that ties it all together is AI Engineering by Chip Huyen. I am a big fan of Chip. I find her work and her career very impressive. She teaches machine learning system design at Stanford University, and she also helped build NVIDIA's generative AI framework. She's also worked at Netflix and she created an AI startup, so she has a lot of experience building AI systems and making them work in production. I think that this is exactly the type of experience that we should be learning from. On a very high level, what makes this book unique is that it addresses the gap of skill. There hadn't been a book or like a very technical book which described how to deploy and ship AI at very large scale. This book is not so much about how to create an LLM or the inner workings of the LLM. It is more about how to use and apply the LLM to a very big application. Based on what experts online are saying, this book has a very in-depth overview on how to deploy and run AI systems in production. So it goes over building AI applications with foundation models, how to evaluate AI systems and evaluation methodology. It talks about prompt engineering, about retrieval augmented generation, about AI agents, fine tuning, data set engineering, and inference as well. Honestly, this was the first book that I knew I wanted to get my hands on and read, but I felt that I didn't have enough technical knowledge about LLMs and AI in general in order to fully be able to apply what's in this book, if that makes sense. I am not looking to become an AI engineer. I just want to make sure that I'm up to date on how these systems work because I want to be able to confidently use them and apply them. And who knows, maybe one day I can work on an AI application, more on an engineering side rather than 
the scientific side. So I think that this is in general just knowledge that is really good to have and something that will hopefully pay off in the future. This is something that I am passionate about and I'm really excited to start this journey and I'm also happy to share it with you guys. This is all I have for you guys for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave it a like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next one.